Can you tell us a bit about yourself and your role at Lightstreamer? Yes, sure. I'm the CTO of Lightstreamer and I actually created Lightstreamer back in 2000 when I was working for a system integrator in the finance area. At the time there was this big requirement for the real-time data on the web. So I came out with this solution and uh, some years later in 2004 we spun off a company dedicated to Lightstreamer and uh, now Lightstreamer is a general purpose technology uh, very used in the finance field but uh, <laughs> very widespread in other domains too. Uh, Alessandro, Ajax has successfully revamped the web by facilitating the migration of many applications mm -hmm. from thick clients to browser-based and zero install clients. Where has Ajax failed and what, according to you, are its shortcomings? Well, actually, Ajax hasn't uh, really failed. Simply, the first definition of the Ajax paradigm was not enough uh, to approach the real-time data requirements. That's why Comet originated not in, uh, uh, as an alternative to Ajax, but as an extension to Ajax. So we usually talk about the Ajax-Comet paradigm. Uh, Comet by itself can provide real-time data, but not with high frequencies. Comet addresses this issue and provides a real-time experience to Ajax users, basically. So we shouldn't consider Ajax uh, in uh, opposition to Comet, but just as two complementary technologies that can be used together. So, uh, the common paradigm has evolved in the style of data transmission that is neither traditional nor Ajax. So, can you demystify this sort of newish paradigm for our viewers? Yeah, sure. So, as I was saying before, Comet uh, can be seen as an extension to Ajax. I'll try to explain two words what is Comet. Comet means to send real-time updates from the server to the client to update a web page in real-time without reloading it and without basing it to traditional polling that is based on fixed period. With Comet, you have two fashion of Comet. One is called the long pole and the other one is called the streaming or forever frame. In both uh, the kinds uh, of techniques, you're able to send real-time events back to the client with different frequencies based on the flavor of this technique. But uh, that's simply all. In the more advanced case, that streaming, you simply use HTTP streaming, that is, uh, you do an HTTP request and that's very, there is a very long-lasting HTTP response that keeps on updating the page. In the previous case, that is the long poll, polling has evolved to a smarter approach so that uh, the server is able to optimize the responses and only send data back if something new is available. So the common paradigm itself is pretty simple to understand, even simple to implement for basic scenarios, very, very difficult to implement uh, from scratch for production scenario. That's why you need the good products that already give you the basics of this paradigm. There is a section of people, and you often find them talking on the web, that Comet is just really the name for a cool new hack that exists therefore in the spirit of improved communication. Do you agree or do you disagree? Well, actually, I completely agree because uh, Lightstreamer, that is uh, the Ajax framework uh, I worked for as I told before, uh, originated in 2000, seven years ago, well before ben both the Ajax and Comet term originated. So something like uh, three, four years ago, when he had to explain people what we do, we had to lose, uh, use a lot of words. We stream to browser without Java applets, controlling bandwidth, it's very complex. Now, after uh, uh, both the Ajax and the Comet term was coined, 2005 for Ajax by Jesse James Garrett, 2006 for Comet by Alex Russell, it's easy. When they ask us what we do, we simply respond, we have a Comet server. So I completely agree in uh, giving some short words, even buzzwords, to identify a new trend in technology that's useful for communication. So while the browser side of Comet is relatively straightforward, Comet applications are known to place reserve strain on current generation web servers and frameworks. Do you think Comet is really scalable? Yeah, as I was saying before, it's not easy to implement a good Comet server and one of the issues is actually scalability. 
if you want to sustain many thousands of concurrent users both based on the long pole or streaming that means that you must be able to keep a lot of tcp sockets open and sending data over them so the traditional architectures of uh, web servers or application servers are not good for this kind of uh, of paradigm for comet that's why if you try to convert a traditional web server to make it worse as a comet application you won't scale if you want to scale you need a, a specific server that was designed for scalability so it's true that comet doesn't scale for naive implementation but does scale in good implementations so that seems to be like the obstacle for uh, common scalability so what do you think are the solutions and the strategies to scale comet uh, and that i would say both vertically and horizontally sure uh, you have to face the two aspects of scalability separately let's start with the vertical scalability to scale vertically, you must have an architecture that uh, without waste, wasting too many threads, it has, uh, must have enough threads and enough decoupling between the stages of processing to take benefits of multiple processor units or multi-cores CPUs, basically. So a good uh, Comet architecture to be scalable needs to decouple threads from connections. You cannot afford to have a thread for each single connection as web servers do. But at the same time, you cannot run in a single thread because it wouldn't scale vertically. So you must find the right uh, compromise and usually a staged event driven architecture based on the fixed size thread pools is the way to scale vertically. About horizontal scalability, the approach we use uh, with Livestreamer is to base it uh, on a traditional web clustering. So you put a web load balancing appliance in front uh, of your Livestreamer server cluster and then let the load balance distribute the load over the nodes. To do that, of course, uh, the server must be good enough uh, to be able to recover a session from one node to another node in a way that is completely transparent for the final user. But the good thing is that uh, with an investment that a customer usually has already done, that is buying a web load balancing appliance for their web server factory, well, they can reuse uh, the same infrastructure to horizontally scale on Livestreamer or on the Comet server in general too. So there are very good ways to scale with Comet. I'd like to talk a little bit about Livestreamer now. Yeah. Um, can you tell us a little bit about Livestreamer's offerings? Um, who uses it? Who are Livestreamer's customers? Sure. Livestreamer uh, actually is available under four editions. They are named under Italian musical tempos. They are called Moderato, Allegro, Presto and Vivace. Moderato is the community edition that is available for free, even if even for commercial use. And then there are these three commercial editions that uh, have different features and uh, targets different kinds of users. So who are our customers? I would say that the vast majority right now is uh, built up by banks. Banks and financial institutions have a huge need for real-time data things to market prices, uh, real-time portfolios, news. So we currently have uh, the major banks, investment banks, uh, using uh, Livestreamer to deliver data both internally to their employees and externally to their customers. But there's another domain that is really increasing in the Comet uh, adoption, and it is the, the online gaming and betting arena. Especially in the UK, a lot of online betting companies are using Comet to deliver real-time odds to, to their customers, and this improves the quality of service. And then you can think at other domains like uh, online auctions, monitoring consoles, uh, sporting applications, and social networks with chats and instant messengers. So you can think uh, to Comet uh, as a way to make the Web 2.0 real-time and fully collaborative. So there is a lot of space for adoption. We are just in the beginning. Great. So the, does the Lightstreamer SDK does it come with client-side support for Flex and Silverlight? Well, actually, the current distributions of Lightstreamer include the full support for Flex client. So you can have an action script library that you integrate in your Flex application 
and it seamlessly handles the network connections, uh, the subscriptions, uh, and that's very straightforward to use. We are receiving a lot of inquiries for the Silverlight library, so that's definitely the next piece that we are going to release, I hope, very soon. Well, actually, you know, Kazing uh, is a startup, an American startup. Uh, I know these guys have met them at some conferences, but uh, I see there are no online demos uh, and there's no downloadables, downloadable software. So actually, I don't have the basis for an actual comparison. I can only guess uh, some considerations on maturity. Of course, having seven years of production, uh, environments and having learned a lot of uh, things and experience from the field uh, I think it's very precious so I'm sure Kazing is a great product but I don't know it enough to compare it to Lightstreamer. <laughs> Just a, another, and one more question. Yeah. Um, you've been here for a couple of days and you've uh, interacted with the developer ecosystem at least of, mm -hmm. uh, a sizable population of that in India. What are your thoughts on the Indian developer population and their adoption for, of Ajax and Comet? Yeah, I really wanted to do this experience because I interacted a lot with Indian developers from abroad during my normal job because many of our customers uh, use uh, Indian outsourcing so I had to directly interface with their developers based in India and uh, I had uh, the, the opportunity to, to appreciate their skills and their way of working. Being here personally and meeting them face to face is a completely different feeling and I can understand how they grasp these new trends in technologies. For example, after my talk, uh, many of these guys came to our booth uh, saying that they had already tested the streamer, they already knew it. Uh, and uh, I think that the Indian developers are very uh, ready to new trends uh, in technology and ready to adopt it. So it's definitely a good experience. So thank you so much, Alessandro. Thank you very much. Cheers.